Hi everyone, it's John from WhatUp and welcome back to another video. Now, we have a whole bunch of Wheel of Time news to cover today. However, none of it is the New York Comic Con stuff. That is a bunch of special videos coming out later this evening and tomorrow. So yes, keep an eye on the channel for New York Comic Con stuff. It is coming. If you haven't already subscribed, click the subscriber button and the notification bell because, let's face it, I'm going to be putting out Wheel of Time videos a whole lot over the next couple days because there is a ton of stuff to cover. What we are going to talk about today is Brandon Sanderson's recent interview where he talked about the Wheel of Time just a little bit. Watseries.com uncovered some new filming locations as well as the still images in the digital poster that the Wheel of Time Twitter account tweeted about in the last couple of days. There is a whole lot to unpack there and I didn't really want to cram that in with the New York Comic Con stuff because let's face it, that really does deserve its own videos. Now, in addition to all of that, I have chosen my 10,000 subscriber contest winner. That's really very cool. I'll probably contact them sometime early next week and then announce it publicly in the following days. Now, all that being said, I want to get that prize shipped out to them so they have it in time for the holidays. And then we can start thinking about the next contest because I have a lot of fun doing these. Now, before we get into the video, spoiler warning, we are going to talk about season one of Amazon and Sony's Wheel of Time series. So... If you haven't already read the book series, be forewarned, I may spoil some very small plot points and character arcs from the first three books. That's The Eye of the World, The Great Hunt, and The Dragon Reborn. But if you haven't read the books, it shouldn't really impact your enjoyment of reading unless you really want to know nothing about them whatsoever. All right, all that being said, let's get on to the video. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is Brandon Sanderson's recent interview with Will Friedel. Now, you may know Will from his guest spots and Critical Role and all of his interviews of a bunch of geek culture celebrities. Now, when him and Brandon were talking, they talked about a multitude of subjects. However, the Wheel of Time came up, and let's face it, if you're here, that's probably why you're going to watch the interview that I've linked down below in the description box. It's just for that Wheel of Time stuff. That's what I did anyway. <laughs> so, uh, when they were talking, Brandon Sanderson basically said that season one of The Wheel of Time is going to cover the eye of the world with some aspects of book two and three. Now, when he said that, the fandom kind of went nuts, and Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, Facebook, and all the discords, they all started talking about it and dissecting his words, trying to figure out if he said more than he really did. I'm here to tell you, unfortunately, while what he said is true, it really isn't new information. Rave Judkins, the showrunner, has already gone on record a couple of times and said that season one will have some aspects of book two and three in it. So, while correct, it's not really new information. Now, from all of the leaks, all the promotional material, and everything else we've seen so far, we can basically kind of assume, mostly correctly, that season one will be almost all of the eye of the world with some additional storylines. So we're going to see Loghain the False Dragon really beefed up. We're going to see some of the new spring stuff probably brought into the current timeline. We're going to see some other things happening. We know we're seeing the White Tower. We know we're seeing Tarvalon. There's some things there that aren't in the book. Now, I think that some of that stuff is probably what Brandon and Rake were talking about. The fact that they're going to world build a bit. We're going to see Gelden. We're going to see Tarvalon. We're going to see the White Tower. We're going to see the Aes Sedai, the Amarillan Seat. We're going to see all of those things that did show up in book two and three, but really weren't in book one. So I don't think we're going to see plot lines like Part of the Great Hunt or going to the Stone of Tear or Falmay. We're not going to see that stuff in season one. That's my take on it, at least anyway. I think we're going to see world building. Those are the aspects of book two and three that he's talking about. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about here is all the new filming locations that WattSeries.com dug up. All right, so if you don't know who WattSeries.com are, they are a group of people that run a Wheel of Time news website. And I've left a link to the article in the description box down below, as well as their website. Go there, read the article, take a look at some of the other stuff they have, bookmark their page. They are a fantastic resource for Wheel of Time news. They have all kinds of scoops and new stuff. And let's face it, they haven't been wrong yet. They're really good. Now... They're talking about this place here. Now, I'm going to have to read some of this stuff because, let's face it, I'm terrible at pronouncing things. Folks that have watched my channel for quite some time now, you already know that. This is Castle Gintrevik Fradrick. <laughs> Again, I completely butchered that. That's terrible. I apologize to my Czech viewers, but that's the best I can do. Uh, now, this particular castle, uh, time has been set aside between October 4th and November 12th, not including weekends, to film there. So they're going to set up for 25 days and film for about five days. Now, they're going to film in a few different locations within this property. Now, this property is about three hectares big, so it's, it's a fairly big property. Uh, and they're going to film in the Rondell, the courtyard fronting it, courtyard one, two, and three, the green rooms and the first floor of Adam's building, the black kitchen and the area in front of it, and the premises of two halls in the Spanish wing and the area in front of the granary. Now, that's a whole lot of different spots, but this place is absolutely beautiful. Now, my guess and my take is that we're going to probably see some of this stuff being scenes in maybe Tarvalon, scenes in maybe Kyrian, 
maybe one of uh, Lord Barthane's Manor. I don't know exactly, but it does look like a very rich, affluent, and noble type place. So if we're doing the Great Hunt, I want to say probably some of those areas at the very least. Now, they're also filming some scenes with extras, and they're calling out, they had a casting call out for an Asian extra that plays the violin or viola and the contrabass flute. Uh, and they're also looking for uh, another extra, a body double. Now, we talked about this back in August. This body double is someone with fair skin and dark hair that will be covered in blood in the nude. Now, they were filmed a couple of days in August. They're filming again in October. So, my guess is, and this is a guess, my guess is that's probably Lanfear. That, that, that fits the description, at least I have in my mind, of Lanfear. And I do know for sure that the actress who's playing Lanfear is on set and filming, although I don't know who she is. And let's face it, I want to know as much as you folks do. So if you know anything at all, emails in the description box, send me an email. I'd love to hear about any and all Wheel of Time news that you folks have. So if you have any experience or time on set or know anything about what they're filming or who's on set, let me know and we'll have a chat about that. But either way, really very cool place, really very neat. And thank you so much for WattSeries.com finding this out for us and letting us know that they are filming there in October and November. So there's that. All right, so now we're going to talk just a bit about those three photos that the Wheel of Time Twitter account released. Now, this first photo is of Rand and Egwene. Now, if you notice the clothes they're wearing, Rand's wearing that Macklemore-esque thrift shop coat that he pops some tags for. In the background, the background seems to match almost exactly that Entertainment Weekly photo shoot that, you know, they released quite some time ago now. This would put this in and around episode six, probably just before they entered the Waygate. Now, if you take a look at how they're looking at each other, that is, to me at least, pure love. Now, Rafe Judkins, the showrunner, has gone on record a couple of times and said that they're aging the characters up for a multitude of reasons. I think this is one of them. I think they are truly going to explore, explore the relationship between Rand and Egwene because, let's face it, although they were a couple in the books, they weren't really a couple when they split up later on for reasons I won't mention because I didn't give a spoiler warning for it. Um, I didn't feel bad for either one of them at all because I was not invested in the relationship even a little bit. I think the show is going to change that, age them up. I think they'll be together. I think they'll actually be a couple and act as a couple. I mean, he does look like he's trying to comfort her before going to the way gate, or maybe she's trying to comfort him. Either way, they do look like they're in love. It's a great photo. I really love it. Second photo is of Daniel Henney as Lan. Now, there's gray in his hair. That's, that's the first thing I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> if you're on Twitter, if you're on Reddit, a lot of people really complained Rand didn't have any gray in his hair because he was described as having gray in his hair in the books. Well, take a look at the still shot. There's gray there, and I'm pretty sure they didn't digitally edit that in after the fact, after reading your comments. So, <laughs> the gray is there. The other thing I want to mention about this is his sword. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, this can't be the sword of Melchior Kings. That was a plain soldier sword, um, and it wouldn't look like this. This is a little too ornate. Well, if you notice on the actual blade of the sword, there's some old tongue written there. A bunch of eagle-eyed viewers on Twitter, on Reddit, uh, Matt from the Dusty Wheel, and myself, a bunch of people, you know, kind of independently translated this, and everyone pretty much kind of agrees that it says, "My warm welcome, Elgmar Daishan," and I, I, I didn't pronounce that right, probably either. But that kind of reads to me as if this was a gift from Lord Elgmar to Lan. So. I like that. That's really cool. To me, that is a very small detail, an Easter egg to the fans, because let's face it, a regular viewer watching this or seeing these photos uh, that have never read the books before that isn't a super fan, they may notice the writing, but they would never translate it. They would never care to think what it says. But fans of the books, a whole bunch of them got together, and they kind of translated the crap out of this. <laughs> and it's really very cool. And that speaks to Lan and Elgmar's friendship, which I really, really can't wait to see. Now, we all know that Lord Elgmar hasn't officially been cast yet. However, there's been a lot of conjectures and rumor that Thomas Chahing is playing the role, although no one really knows for sure because there hasn't really been a whole lot of stuff other than circumstantial evidence. Now, I'm kind of hoping that we do get to see some of the other cast members that, you know, that have been uncovered, but we don't know the roles in the coming days before the show actually airs. I'd really love to see that. But I like this, and I like the fact that we see that they are displaying the friendship between the two of them. That's really very cool. Here's the last photo that the Wheel of Time Twitter account released, and this was of Rosamund Pike as Moraine, and this looks to be in the two rivers, and it's kind of a close-up of the same photos we've seen before, where she's uh, wandering through the, you know, the square, the, the village green, and you see in the background some of the lanterns for uh, the Beltine Festival, some of the people, and I believe... I believe that is the wine spring in behind her. It looks to be uh, part of the same images we've seen before in uh, Empire Magazine, uh, as well as Entertainment Weekly and uh, released on Twitter. 
Now, take a look at this, take a look at her costume. I can't see how anyone says these costumes are plain. This is absolutely beautiful. And it is her signature blue because she is blue Aja. I really love it. This is a beautiful picture of uh, Rosamund Pike's Marine. All right, now we're gonna talk about that digital poster that the Wheel of Time Twitter account released on Twitter the other day. Now, basically they put it out and they said, quote tweet, the tweet, and uh, tell us what you're most excited for with the series. And they were gonna choose 50 people who did the quote tweet and give them a digital copy of the poster signed by the cast. Now, I have no idea what that means. Is it a photo of a poster signed? Is it a poster like this with their signature superimposed over it? Um, are they shipping out a copy? Of, I have no idea. I have no idea. So let me know in the comments down below if you're one of the lucky folks that won the poster. And I really haven't heard of anyone being contacted about it yet. But if you are one of the lucky folks that did win this poster, let me know exactly what it is you got and send me an email. Show me a picture of it. I really would like to see it because I'm interested in what they meant by that. Now, this poster was met with a mixed reaction from the fandom. I personally liked it. I think it's very cool. And there's a lot of small details in it that give us some clues to about, the, about the show. And I like picking apart stuff like that. I like the colors. I like the way it looks. However, a lot of people didn't like the composition. They didn't like the editing of it. They didn't like the positioning of people. Uh, and they didn't like the fact that it looked very generic. So when I say that, I don't mean that it looks like every other poster. I mean, it looks like a lot of the Lord of the Rings posters when the movies come out. It looks like a lot of the Witcher posters. Uh, it looks like a lot of the Harry Potter Potter posters. They didn't like the way the fade looked because he looked a little bit like Lord, Lord Voldemort, things like that. I personally didn't see that stuff. I liked it myself. However, that was some of the reaction from the fandom, especially on Reddit and Facebook. There wasn't a whole lot of love for the poster there. If we take a closer look at the fade, I, I kind of see how he looked like Lord Voldemort, but I do get that he is the fade. Uh, one of the big complaints I've seen from people was the fact that his cloak was blowing in the wind. Let's face it, we have no idea if they're doing the still cloak shtick for the show. It was in the books that uh, they were slightly phased in his face and time, so the fades didn't get touched by weather or wind. But I don't know if they're doing that show because that would seem to be a lot of CG for a lot of fades. I have no idea if they're going to or not. We haven't seen enough of them on screen yet to even make some kind of guess. But really very cool nonetheless. And then down below you have the main cast. Now, what I want to mention here is the main cast seemed to be arranged in a certain way on purpose. Now, Robert Jordan was known for a lot of foreshadowing in his books, and I think the marketing team is starting to pick up on that and use it. Or maybe, just maybe, I'm digging too far into something when maybe I shouldn't be. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But the characters are arranged in a certain way. You have Perrin and Egwene in the left. Then you have Lan, Moraine, and Nynaeve. And then you have Matt and Rand on the right. They're in their groups where they separate from Shader Logoth. So we know they start together, they go to Shader Logoth, they get separated into those three groups, then they come back together later on. So I'm wondering if maybe this was done on purpose. I don't know exactly, but it's quite possible. I do know that I would like to think that some of the marketing team is starting to get into some of the foreshadowing that Robert Jordan liked, because let's face it, that's a huge part of the books. We've already kind of seen that a little bit with the Land Sword, so I think there's going to be a lot of small Easter eggs in the show on purpose for the fans. All right, so I'm going to get rid of myself here because I am in the way. But this is the new Facebook banner they released. Now, this shows a few more things, and we're going to get in close here in a second. But it shows the fade up top on his horse. Uh, it shows some of the Trollocs and a much better look at them. Down on the right-hand side, we see what appears to be the Shining Iron Soldiers. In the left-hand side at the bottom, I believe that is probably Tarvlon and uh, the White Tower. That's my guess. So let's bring myself back. We'll go to the next here. So this is what it looks like all together. And now we're gonna dive in and out of different parts of the photo. So we're gonna zoom in on the top. And again, gotta get rid of myself here. Nobody wants to see me. They wanna see this fade. So you see the fade and you see two of the Trollocs. Really, really very cool. Much more fade looking. Uh, I love the bones and the horse. That has been in a lot of the fan art that was in the, um, the Eye of the World and the New Spring comic books. The way it was showcased, really very cool. But this is probably our first really good look at Trollocs up close uh, in a still image. And I like how humanoid and bestial they look at the same time. Um, some people have likened them to the orcs or the Yurikai from Lord of the Rings and they're very scared they'd be the same. Now, nah, I'm not worried about that at all anymore after seeing them like this. They look very, very cool. I'm super excited to see them. I mean, take a look here. You, ha you have the horns in the head, uh, three, maybe four horns there, the tusks underneath, Really bestial, really very cool. Uh, these are what I believe to be the Shining Iron Soldiers in the bottom right hand corner. And the reason I say I think they're Shining Iron Soldiers is because there was a bunch of leaked photos that Narc from the Daily Trollock released. And I think these kind of match that. The banners look kind of the same. The people on horseback look kind of the same. Maybe Lord Elgmar's in there, maybe Uno. I don't know. 
they're kind of in the background, hard to say. I'd like to believe they are. I'd like to believe they're showcased somewhere in there, but really very cool. I believe they're Shinarans. Then we have Trollox here. And again, these are all very different, which I'm happy. They're not generic, they're not the same. They're all gonna be a little bit different. Some have horns, we have a more humanoid one to the right. And I wanna believe, I really, really truly wanna believe the one on the bottom there with the glowing eyes, Narc. I mean, we know Narc's in the show. I wanna say that's Narc. Let's just, let's just go on a limb here and say that's Narc. It's probably not, but I wanna say it is. This is what I believe to be the White Tower and Tarvalon in the background. I think, I mean, it kind of looks the same, uh, but it's all in darkness and, and, and swathed in blue, so it's hard to tell. And then you have these Trollocs here in the bottom. Uh, again, you see different types of horns. They're very muscular. They're very scary looking. I mean, let's face it, um, I know we've heard that this show will probably have a 14 rating. Uh, that's, that's the rumor right now. Um, however, I think that rating is probably going to be for frightening scenes and gore because let's look at this this is this is absolutely horrifying this definitely could be a horror movie in any way shape or form and i've been saying it for years that the wheel of time could definitely be portrayed as a horror and they definitely should get sam raimi to do some sort of horror element with it i mean he's my favorite director bar none anyway and he's really good at horror i think you'd do a great job with some of the shadow spawn and trollocks and stuff like that all right, so that's all the news I have for you today. Stay tuned for my New York Comic Con videos. And yes, I know some of the stuff from that kind of trumps all of this, but this is still very interesting to me. Um, and I'm really very excited to make those videos because it's, and there's a whole lot there to unpack. I, I Just stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the notification bell. I put out a bunch of videos per week and they're all Wheel of Time on Prime Centric. And as the show gets closer, Let's face it, there's going to be more and more videos, and when the show releases, I'm going to be doing multiple videos per episode, breakdowns, Easter eggs, deep dives, you name it. I'll do it for each episode of the show. You don't want to miss any of that. All right, thank you so much for sticking with me here to the very end. Here's to many more.